biotechnology has opened doors for many applications in the fields of agriculture, therapeutics, diagnostics, waste treatment, food processing, bioremediation, and energy production. It uses genetically modified plants, fungi, and animals to produce biopharmaceuticals. Biotechnology operates in three critical areas of research. First, it provides the best catalyst in the form of improved organisms such as microbes and pure enzymes. Second, it creates optimal conditions for these catalysts to act in. And third, biotechnology provides downstream processing technologies which help in the purification of protein and organic compounds. Biotechnology also plays a key role in agriculture and food production. With a gradual increase in the world's population, there is a growing concern about increasing the production and quality of food. Traditionally, agricultural production can be increased by employing two methods, the use of agrochemicals and organic farming. During the Green Revolution in India, crop yield had increased substantially due to better management practices, improved crops, and above all, the use of agrochemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers. The Green Revolution managed to triple food supply. However, it still fell short for the growing population. The fact remains that in developing nations like India, agrochemicals are still an expensive proposition for farmers. Besides, it is also not possible to increase the yield of existing varieties using methods like conventional breeding and organic farming. In such a situation, genetically engineered crop-based agriculture is a possible solution. Genetic engineering techniques have been used to alter the genes of many plants, bacteria, fungi, and animals, which are then called genetically modified organisms or GMOs. Nowadays, genetically modified or GM plants are being used increasingly as they have several benefits. These plants have a higher tolerance to abiotic stresses such as cold, drought, salt, and heat. And they also help reduce the use of chemical pesticides as many of them are pest resistant. In addition, GM plants increase the efficiency of mineral usage and thereby prevent early exhaustion of soil fertility. Moreover, GM crops such as vitamin A enriched rice enhance the nutritional value of food. Some GM plants also cater to industrial needs by providing resources such as starches, fuels, and pharmaceuticals. However, the greatest contribution of biotechnology to the field of agriculture is the production of pest-resistant plants. For example, Bt toxin produced by a bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis has been cloned and expressed in many plants to make them insect resistant. Bacillus thuringiensis produces some crystal proteins during a particular phase of its growth. These proteins, called Bt toxin or insecticidal proteins, are toxic and inactive. 
Although the Bt toxin protein exists as an inactive protoxin, once an insect ingests it, it is converted into an active form of toxin due to the alkaline pH of the gut which solubilizes the crystals. The activated toxin binds to the surface of the mid-gut epithelial cells of the insect and creates pores which cause cell swelling and lysis and eventually kill the insect. Specific Bt toxin genes were isolated from Bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into many crop plants such as cotton. This variety of cotton is also known as Bt cotton. The choice of gene depends on which pest is targeted. For example, a Bt toxin is coded by a gene called Cry. Cry genes are encoded by Cry1AC, Cry2AB, Cry3AB, and Cry3BB. They provide resistance to cotton bollworms, corn borer, Colorado potato beetle, and corn rootworm, respectively. Over the years, biotechnology has given rise to several interesting methods of pest resistance, such as RNA interference. It is a method of cellular defense in all eukaryotic organisms. It is designed to control the infestation of nematodes or roundworms, which act as parasites in several plants and animals. For example, a nematode named Meloidigyne incognitia infects the roots of tobacco plants and leads to a drastic reduction in crop yield. This pest in tobacco roots can be controlled using RNA interference. This method involves silencing of a specific messenger RNA of the nematode due to a complementary double-stranded RNA molecule. The source of this complementary RNA could be from an infection by viruses having RNA genomes or mobile genetic elements called transposons. These transposons replicate via an RNA intermediate called reverse transcriptase. Using agrobacterium vectors, Nematode-specific genes are introduced into the host tobacco plant. Since these two RNAs are complementary to each other, they form a double-stranded RNA that initiates RNA interference. The introduction of DNA is such that it produces both sense and antisense RNA in the host cells. The small interfering RNA strands of double-stranded RNA bind to messenger RNA and prevent translation of the mRNA that cause silencing. As a result, the messenger RNA of the nematode is silenced. Consequently, the parasite is not able to survive in a transgenic or genetically engineered host expressing specific interfering RNA. Therefore, the transgenic plant gets protected from the parasite. Pests are the bane of food producing plants. The growth of pest resistant plants and the development of methods such as RNA interference have revolutionized agriculture and ensured good food production. The recombinant DNA technology has played a crucial role in the field of medical science and healthcare by helping in early diagnosis and treatment of many diseases. It has also enabled mass production of several effective therapeutic drugs. However, the most striking feature of recombinant therapeutics is that 
they do not provoke the human body to produce antibodies. On the contrary, use of products isolated from non-human resources can induce an immunological response from the human body. Over the years, biotechnological processes have led to the development of revolutionary medical methods and techniques. These are genetically engineered insulin, gene therapy and molecular diagnosis. One of the biggest breakthroughs in medical science came with the production of genetically engineered insulin. Insulin is a hormone which regulates the glucose and energy metabolism in the human body. Insulin produced by diabetic patients is either insufficient or impaired. Therefore, they are given doses of insulin at regular time intervals. Earlier, Insulin was extracted from the pancreas of slaughtered animals such as pigs and cattle. However, insulin from animal sources often triggered allergies and reactions in some diabetic patients. These problems were overcome with genetically engineered insulin. To understand how it was produced, let us first understand the structure of insulin. Insulin consists of two short polypeptide chains with amino acids, namely chain A and chain B. These chains are linked together by disulfide bonds. In mammals, insulin is synthesized as a prohormone containing an extra stretch known as C-peptide. However, this prohormone is processed before it becomes mature insulin. This made it a big challenge to produce mature insulin without the C-peptide chain from pro-insulin. The breakthrough came in 1983 when an American company Eli Lilly prepared two DNA sequences that corresponded to chain A and B in the human insulin. Thereafter, they inserted these DNA sequences in E. coli plasmids and insulin chains were formed. Both chain A and B were produced and extracted separately and later on they were interlinked with disulfide bonds. As a result, human insulin or bioengineered insulin was formed, which is now manufactured and used worldwide. Another innovative application of recombinant DNA technology is gene therapy. It is a collection of methods employed to correct defective genes and cure diseases such as hemophilia and cystic fibrosis. There are a number of steps followed in gene therapy. The therapy begins with the removal of cells from a patient suffering from a genetic disorder. Simultaneously in the laboratory, a virus which acts as a vector is altered so that it cannot reproduce. A therapeutic gene is then inserted into this virus. Next, the altered virus is mixed with the cells taken from the patient. As a result, the cells which were taken from the patient become genetically altered. Finally, the altered cells are injected into the patient. These genetically altered cells produce the desired protein or hormone in the patient and in this way gene therapy eliminates the root cause of the disease. Gene therapy was used for the first time in 1990 
on a four-year-old girl suffering from adenosine deaminase deficiency, also known as ADA deficiency. While treating ADA deficiency using gene therapy, lymphocytes are collected from the patient's blood and are then grown in a culture outside the body. After this, a functional ADA, that is, a complementary DNA, is introduced into the lymphocytes with the help of retrovirus vector. Thereafter, the lymphocytes are returned to the patient's blood by transfusion. ADA deficiency is a hereditary disease and the patients suffering from it bear non-functional T lymphocytes. ADA is caused due to deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase enzyme which is essential for the functioning of the immune system. Before the advent of gene therapy, ADA deficiency was cured with the help of bone marrow transplantation and enzyme replacement therapy. Bone marrow transplantation involves the transplantation of blood stem cells derived from bone marrow. While enzyme replacement therapy is a medical treatment that involves the replacement of a certain enzyme by injection. However, none of these methods could cure ADA completely. However, if a functional ADA from bone marrow cells is introduced at an early embryonic stage, a permanent cure can be achieved. However, these cells are not immortal. Hence, usually, patients need regular infusions of genetically engineered lymphocytes. Apart from treatment of diseases, Biotechnological methods are also used effectively for molecular diagnosis of diseases. Conventional methods of diagnosis such as urine and serum analysis detect the presence of a pathogen at a relatively late stage when pathogen concentration in the body becomes very high. Conversely, methods such as polymerase chain reaction or PCR and enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA facilitate early diagnosis. PCR can detect a bacteria or virus even when its concentration is quite low in the body by amplifying their nucleic acid. It is commonly used these days to detect HIV in suspected AIDS patients genetic disorders, and gene mutations in suspected cancer patients. The other method of molecular diagnosis is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA, which is based on the principle of antibody-antigen interaction. It can detect the pathogenic infection by the presence of antigens such as proteins and glycoproteins, or by detecting the antibodies synthesized against the pathogen. ELISA and PCR have completely modernized the methods of disease detection. Along with gene therapy and genetically engineered insulin, these biotechnological innovations have transformed the face of medicine and healthcare. Over the last few decades, there has been rapid growth in the field of molecular biology and biotechnology. This growth is a result of intensive research undertaken in these fields with the help of transgenic animals. The genome of transgenic animals is deliberately modified to possess and express an extra foreign gene. Over 95% of transgenic animals are mice. Before the development of molecular genetics, the regulation and function of mammalian genes 
could only be studied through the observation of inherited characteristics or spontaneous mutations. The science of genetics developed quite late. However, breeding animals for purposes such as increased milk production was known to man for a long time. The first genetically engineered animals were the chimeric mice produced during the 1970s. They were created through an experiment in which cells of two different embryos of different strains were combined together at an early stage of development. Therefore, a single embryo was formed and implanted into a surrogate mother who gave birth to chimeric mice. These mice exhibited characteristics of each strain and became the first transgenic animals. Let us now understand the main reasons behind the use of transgenic animals. Some transgenic animals can be especially designed to study gene regulation and the effects of genes on the normal functions of the human body and its development. For example, they can help in the study of the biological role of the insulin-like growth factor. To study the role of insulin in humans, genes from a rabbit or a mouse are introduced into another mouse, which then gives birth to transgenic animals having the altered gene for insulin. Then, the biological effects of this introduced gene are studied. Thereafter, information is obtained about the role of insulin in the human body. Transgenic animals are also designed to understand how genes contribute to the development of a disease. They serve as models and help in the research of new treatments for diseases such as cancer, cystic fibrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and Alzheimer's disease. Transgenic animals are used to produce expensive biological products such as alpha-1 antitrypsin at a cheaper rate. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is required for making medicines for the treatment of human diseases such as emphysema. Attempts are also being made to create biological products for the treatment of genetic disorders such as phenylketonuria or PKU and cystic fibrosis. In 1997, the first transgenic cow, Rosie, was created, which produced human protein-enriched milk containing 2.4 grams of human protein in every liter. This milk contained the human gene alpha-lactalbumin, which made it a more nutritionally balanced product than natural cow milk. Therefore, the milk of the transgenic cow, Rosie, could be given to babies and elderly people with special nutritional and digestive needs. Nowadays, transgenic mice are being developed to test the safety of vaccines such as the ones meant for polio before they can be used on humans. In future, if testing on mice proves to be successful and reliable, it could replace the use of monkeys for vaccine testing. Transgenic animals are helpful in testing the toxicity of chemicals as the results can be obtained in a short time. For this testing, specific transgenic animals are designed which carry genes which make them more sensitive to toxic substances as compared to non-transgenic animals. Thereafter, they are exposed to the toxic substances and the effects on them are recorded and studied. The creation of transgenic animals has reduced the overall use of laboratory animals. For example, there is a shift from the use of higher order animals such as dogs to the lower order species such as mice. However, use of transgenic animals is still surrounded by a lot of ethical issues. In the year 1995, 
several images of a laboratory mouse with a human ear shaped cartilage grown on its back were circulated in the print media worldwide. It was called the Vacanti mouse after the name of its creator, Charles Vacanti, who had used the mouse to display a method of developing ear cartilage for transplantation into human patients. The photos of Vacanti or the ear mouse created much uproar and faced scathing criticism from animal rights activists and anti-genetics groups. It raised debates and ethical issues regarding the use of transgenic animals and the manipulation of plant and animal genomes for genetic research. Biotechnological innovations and research are the reality of our times. However, it is important to question the ethics of any research that inflicts pain and suffering on an animal. Therefore, Ethical standards should be set up in order to monitor and regulate the morality of all human activities that help or harm living organisms. Transgenic biotechnology presents many opportunities from increasing food production to providing treatment for diseases. However, it is not without its repercussions. Genetic modification of organisms can lead to unpredictable results once the transgenic organisms are introduced back into the ecosystem. Therefore, the Government of India has set up the Genetic Engineering Approval Committee or GEAC to make decisions regarding the validity of GM research and safety of introducing GM organisms. Apart from the use of organisms for transgenic research, Another pertinent ethical issue is regarding the grant of patents. In recent years, many multinational companies have gained patents for products and technologies that make use of genetic material and biological resources identified and used by the farmers and indigenous people of a particular country over ages. For example, Rice has been an essential part of Asia's agricultural history for thousands of years. In India, rice is one of the major food crops and an estimated 2 lakh varieties of rice exist in our country. Apart from this unique diversity of rice, India is also particularly known for basmati, a long rice grain variety with a unique fragrance. Basmati has a long-standing history in our country. In Sanskrit, Basmati means the fragrant one. It is an age-old indigenous Indian variety mentioned in several ancient texts, folklore and poetry. In 1997, an American company, Rice Tech, crossed the Indian Basmati with semi-dwarf rice varieties and claimed that it had developed a new rice variety. This company even got the Basmati rice patented through the US Patent and Trademark Office, which allowed it to sell this new variety of Basmati in the US and abroad. The patent also restricted other people from selling Basmati. Later on, the government of India intervened and held long discussions with the United States, after which the patent was reviewed. Subsequently, Rice Tech lost or withdrew most of its claims. Apart from Basmati, attempts have been made to patent products and processes based on Indian herbal medicines Such blatant use of bioresources by multinational companies without proper authorization from the respective country and its people and without compensatory payment to them is known as biopiracy. Developing nations such as India have a rich biodiversity and traditional knowledge regarding their bioresources. In contrast, 
the industrialized nations of the world are financially sound, but they lack biodiversity as well as traditional knowledge of bioresources. As a result, the bioresources of developing nations are often manipulated by the industrialized nations in order to develop modern commercial methods that save time, effort and expenditure. For example, they use the therapeutic herbs found in the developing countries to manufacture drugs. Developing countries are now realizing the inadequate compensation and unequal power sharing with the developed nations. Therefore, they have now begun to formulate laws to prevent unauthorized exploitation of their bioresources and traditional knowledge. For example, the Indian Parliament has cleared the Second Amendment of the Indian Patents Bill, which takes issues such as biopiracy, patent terms, emergency provisions, and research and development initiative into account. In today's competitive environment, it's important for a country to be vigilant against biopiracy and formulate laws to safeguard the rich legacy of its bioresources.